So welcome to episode 54, and we have a very special guest here, uh, Ricky Warwick, from um, the uh, Black Star Riders. Um, now, tell us, the, the reaction to the record, since it, uh, you would have had any, sort of some preconceptions as to how it would be received, how, how was the reality compared? Um, you know, we, we, we knew, we believed it was a good record, and uh, we believed in the songs and we believed that we'd done a good job making it, but obviously that counts for nothing until it's out there on what what you know the real world and what people think of it and um, we've been blown away um, the reaction's been phenomenal reviews were great it sold very well um, and I think we couldn't have we couldn't have asked for any, any, any better reaction than we got it's been really good since it come out I mean, have you had any even inklings of second thoughts about the name change because obviously we've had in recent years Van Halen and, and sure. Black Sabbath made these spectacular comebacks and you could have easily been counted as in just another one of those, but any has it crossed your mind at all? No, not at all. I mean, I knew as soon as we did it, it felt like the right thing to do. It was almost like a weight was lifted um, off, off our shoulders, and, and certainly now in hindsight, it absolutely was the right thing to do. And I think that everybody's accepted it on, on, on both sides of the of the divide. You know, mm-hmm. people that weren't happy with us recording under Lizzie have got what they wanted, and people that wanted us to write new material that had a Lizzie vibe and a Lizzie flavor have got that as well. Mm-hmm. So. I think it's a win-win for everybody. Mm. Has it, has, I mean, I'll, we'll move on off this subject after this question, but was it a purely a moral decision, or was there, was there a business aspect um, to it? No, it was purely moral, you know, and, and the aspect sort of as well that Brian Downey, uh, you know, uh, Brian had decided that he didn't want to tour as intensively as we had been, mm-hmm. and obviously the, the amount of work that a new record would involve, the promo, the touring, mm-hmm. would have been very, very full-on, which it has been, mm-hmm. and Brian... Quite, you know, as he's got his right to do, just say, "Look, guys, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to do that at this stage mm. of my life," and it was a good, it was a chance for him to sort of jump off, and, mm. and uh, so that sort of had, was a deciding factor as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Darren Wharton was the same thing; he just didn't want to be on the road, you know, six months out of the year. Um, so that, you know, those things all contributed to to the name change, but it just didn't feel right. The but the, you know, the bottom line was it just didn't sit right with with us. Mm. Um, and, and and that was the deciding factor, really. You know, yeah, the aspect of just starting all over again, doing these sort of interviews and playing smaller clubs. I mean, you said Brian, you know, didn't want to keep doing. What about yourself? Like, did you ever look, wake up any mornings and go, oh, why am I doing all this all over again? No, I mean, this is, this is what we do. I mean, right. the, those of us who kept playing, you know, myself, Damon, Marco, and uh, and and Scotty, you know, we're road dogs, and this is what we do. This is what we love. I mean, more for us, maybe I I don't know, but we, like I said, we believe strongly. And the unit that we had with the four of us, when Jimmy DeGrasso came in, that even strengthened that even more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we really believe in this band, and really believe that you know we're, we're a new band with an old history, and, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a unique situation to be in. And uh, the tour has been maybe not nine weeks; it's been a blast. Mm-hmm. We're going to play three songs, and I don't want to sort of uh, lead you in any direction. But the Kingdom of the Kingdom of the Lost video is outstanding. Um, Thank you. And can you tell us? I mean. D- did the, does the video have a life of its own? Is it about what the song is about? Or when, when, did you have that kind of vision in your mind when, when the song was being produced? Well, I did, you know, the video <laughs> for that is, is, it came about, Michael Beattie, who produced the video, is a very good friend of mine for Belfast, and he's a, he's a great documentary maker, done a lot of stuff for the BBC, and, and worked with Van Morrison and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And Michael heard the song, and uh, I said, you know, I'd love you to do a video for it, and Michael got it straight away, and he wanted to, to capture the, you know, the... It was. It would have been too easy to do. Here's Ireland. Here's the moon. Here's the glens. Here's mm-hmm. the Irish pubs. Here's mm-hmm. believe in Ireland. We wanted to do it from the other aspect of film the whole thing in California and America. Film you know transplants and transients and people there and film people. Film the beautiful scenery. Film the not so beautiful scenery. Mm-hmm. Film the people that had gone there, made a success of their life, like the DeLorean guy or or anything mm-hmm. like that. You know, or and then film people. That, it, it hadn't gone well for mm-hmm. as well people that were living on the streets and stuff like that to show both sides of the coin that, that you know it's the kingdom of the lost you know sometimes you can find your <laughs> your fortune and your or your future or sometimes it, it doesn't matter where you live it's you know the, the whole online thing about that song is, is, is really it's it doesn't matter where you move to or what you do or anything if you're not right up there to begin with mm-hmm. it doesn't matter where you live you know you've got to get that right first and then I think the rest will follow. I think he portrayed that in the video. Should we make that the first song? Sure. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. So, uh, welcome uh, back. I'm here with uh, uh, Ricky uh, Warwick. Ricky, um, I just, you were talking earlier about um, being a new band and having to do all the hard work. Do you have to realign your expectations in this age where 
you know, music, you know, is not selling. People sure. people steal it. I mean, I mean, sure. um, h- h- how does that sort of affect you, your ambitions and the way you go about things? Well, it does. I mean, you you, you got to keep up with the ever changing times and ever changing way people access music and what's going on. Um, to try and make a living. I mean, I'm not going to sit here like it's just it's art, but it's a business. Mm-hmm. We're mm-hmm. we're here to make money. Mm-hmm. You know, that's with families to feed and, mm-hmm. and mortgages to pay. Um, so you've got to be very conscious of what's going on, and uh, it's something that we pay close attention to. But we're very aware that we need to give the people that, that buy the music and enable us to do what we do. We've got to give them value for money, and that's mm-hmm. something that the Black Star writers are trying to do with all the different formats in the albums. Mm-hmm. We try and keep our, our ticket prices as low as we possibly can. Mm-hmm. The VIP meet and greets that we put on, we try. We will do four acoustic. We'll play mm-hmm. acoustic sets for yeah, the people yeah, that yeah. bought those. So we want to feel people feel that they're getting something for their hard-earned cash. But I mean, the industry stinks. You think the price of an album hasn't gone up in twenty years? Mm-hmm. Just you know, Spotify and all these things. The artist, the artist is, is getting ripped off all the time, you know. And uh, you know, it's a hard, we work hard and we work hard mm-hmm. just as anybody else. And it annoys me when people go, "Well, you know, music should be free and blah blah blah." Well, no, it shouldn't. You know, you're yeah. creating something. You're working hard. You're putting your soul into it. That's your job, like any other job. People should 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 pay to access that. Mm. Um, and it's just, it, I think the artists have been, they had a, they've been taken for a ride for far too long and it doesn't show any sign of getting better. Have you, everyone in the industry is trying to come up with the goal, the answer, yeah. you know, how everyone can um, earn a living again. Sure. Um, you probably spend a lot of your time thinking about it. Have you got the? Have you got any an inkling of what the what might be at the end of the tunnel? I think again, it's just <laughs> it's keep working. You know, quality show it's quality. It's it's make sure you you, you have something that, that people enjoy and people feel that they're getting good value to part with their disposable income, mm. which is what people do. You know, that's that's a part of their income they're using to go to shows, buy music, and stuff like that. Is to give them something that keeps them coming back and keeps them interested. We run a, we run a very tight ship here mm. um, and we're lucky enough that we all do make a living out of it and, 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 and that's great. Um, but yeah, you know, it's not easy. You've got to keep on the ball. You've got to keep your eye on, on, on what's going on and, and move at the times. I noticed Thin Lizzy, uh, I don't want to get too business oriented, but I noticed Thin Lizzy was selling the actual that night show at the end of the show on, a, on, a, on one tour. I went to a, 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 a show at um, yeah. Harry Wolf. D- yeah. Does that... I mean, does that work? Do you like that? Is it? Um, you know, it, it doesn't. It's okay. I don't, personally, I don't like it because you know you can have a stinker that night and, mm. and uh, <laughs> or just not have a good show and and you're there, there. It is. It's you know, it's you, you don't get a chance to go. Well, you know what? I didn't. You know, I didn't really play good that night. But then sometimes maybe that's good. Sometimes it's maybe good to get the warts and all. I don't know. I don't. I, mean, I honestly don't know how I feel about that. Um, I as a fan would not be interested in buying that if I was a fan. Mm-hmm. I would prefer to have a live album that a band made mm-hmm. or I'd rather have the memory of the show. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of the whole iPhone not filming the show. I want to go to, when I go to a gig, I go and watch it with my own eyes, mm-hmm. not through a, mm-hmm. you know, a fucking iPhone, you know, mm-hmm. and, and uh, I want to experience it and I want to, it's a human connection, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, you're probably asking the wrong guy, I'm not a big fan, but certainly <laughs> some people do like it and some mm-hmm. people, you know, will want to hear the show. Mm-hmm. I think it's time for us to play another song. As I said, any in the re- history of recorded music, but you probably do want to promote your record. <laughs> yeah, uh, my, yeah. well, you know, it'll be nice to do another Black Star Riders. Let's do Bone for Glory. Okay, it's the final um, part of our interview with Ricky Warwick of uh, Black Star Riders, and basically we're at the point where I have to ask him all the questions I haven't asked yet. Um, right. <laughs> and the, you've, you, a lot of fellas now in, um, in bands, you know, at this stage of their career, they're in three or four bands at once, but I, sure. I saw an interview where you said you're just not that sort of person, you can't do that. Um, no, I, I prefer to, you know, I like to concentrate, I like to do something and do it well, and I like mm-hmm. to concentrate on that thing. Um, and, uh, you know, Black Star Riders is something that I really believe in. You know, writing these songs took a lot of work, mm-hmm. took a lot of time, and I wanted to make sure they were, you know, what I felt was the top quality. Mm-hmm. And uh, I like to focus on that. I mean, I'll, I'll, I love doing my solo stuff, mm-hmm. and I will put out another solo album, but mm-hmm. I'll wait till the BSR's off the road, and I'll focus on that. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I don't know, I just, I, for me personally, I, don't, I just think, you know, when people are in three or four bands, I, I, I just think it looks sloppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, I prefer to, you know, concentrate on the job at hand, right here, right now, mm-hmm. before I'd move on to something else. But that's just me. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it can work for somebody else, mm-hmm. it's all... You know, personal choice here, mm. but uh, I prefer to focus on one thing and do it as best I can. As someone who writes, I, I thought it was great to listen. To, it's a clever record. There, 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 aren't, there aren't cliches. Thank it's you. not full of cliches. And like, um, I just wonder, what is the process? I mean, how do you? 
Is it a painstaking process or is it down to inspiration? You know, both it can be. It can be mm. very easy, or it can mm. be painstaking. It's, it's mm. the old, it is the old cliche that mm. some songs <laughs> take five minutes and some songs can take mm. a year. Mm. Um, I'm always writing notes and scribbling ideas down. Mm. So when Damon or Scott come in with a riff or an idea or a piece of music, or even me, I've usually got something that I've, I'll hear straight away. I'll go I think, mm. well, that will fit that, mm. and um, you know, and then we're off and running, mm. and we just take it from there. And we usually build a song around around like a, a great lyric or a, a good hook or a good chorus. Mm. And I just just take it from there, and uh, you know that's, that's how the process has worked. That's certainly how it worked with, with all hell breaks loose. Even though it's not a Thin Lizzy record, did you find lyrically, and as far as being um, um, literate in the lyrics, that you still there was still a, a legacy there to be respected? Absolutely. I mean, you know, living and, and breathing Phil's work my whole life, and then certainly as intensely as I've done the last three years, mm. um, it's absolutely rubbed off on me, and I feel that he's taught me so much mm. um, I've learned so much from just studying the man and you know his whole writing his whole delivery his whole stage pre- just everything mm. and I've taken that on board with my own obviously personality and what mm-hmm. I do um, you know I, I, and I think that people would expect us to keep that and retain that identity certainly Scott Gorham is always going to play guitar like Scott Gorham so you'll have that sound mm-hmm. But that Lizzie vibe is something that I think people won't be as hard to retain, mm. as well as, you know, being ourselves and going off and finding our own food as well. I think that's something that we always will retain is, is you know, we want, we, we want to, we all love them, Lizzie. We want to mm. keep that spirit alive and, and Black Star Riders. Mm. But, you know, um, it is a different band and it does give us the freedom to, to try other things as well that maybe we couldn't have tried if we were stuck with them, Lizzie, mm. you know what I mean? Now, the last Thin Lizzy dates were in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, were they the last Thin Lizzy dates? I mean, um, are, there, are there plans to do more? Yeah, so far, you know, they have been. I mean, there's talk of maybe a couple of one-offs, and that's what it will be. It'll be mm. one-offs. I don't think there'll be any more, more touring. I mean, we're all very focused on Black Star Riders, and the diary in next year for 2014 is, is already really filling up mm. Black Star Riders stuff. So it's a question of, of time, and like I said, I think that, you know, with a couple of guys not wanting to do long touring anymore, uh, and we do, you mm. know, our focus is, is on that. Mm. Uh, but I wouldn't rule out, you know, a couple of one off shows here and there. Mm. And what about the Almighty? Um, there's some anniversaries <laughs> coming up. Uh... There is, yeah. <laughs> it's just, says the man, he doesn't like doing three things. Anymore. <laughs> um, you know, that's the, the, the reissues are coming out through Universal, which is great, and mm. um, myself and Stumpy from the band have been working on those. And I'm, I'm really glad that that stuff's finally getting remastered and put up on iTunes and, and Amazon and all that stuff. But as regards shows, I I would you know I would like to do it, um, but I don't think there's a couple of people out there that don't really want to do it. Really? Yeah. So you know I, I'll never say never, but I you know I, I, as, as time goes on, it's looking less and less likely. Mm. I'm, as someone who's two, two, we're sort of speeding through the question now, but as someone who's on the road 250 days a year or playing 250 gigs a year, you must have a, a good routine to stay healthy. And get, one one tip for a road warriors listening out there, one one tip that, that help help you stay sane. Well, like, again, <laughs> again, everybody's different. You know, mm. what works for me might not work for anybody else. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't drink, I don't do drugs anymore. Mm. Um, I, I I work out every day, I run every day. And uh, I look after myself, mm-hmm. and that's how I get through this. I enjoy the shows. I'm fit. I'm in shape, and and I don't get you know touch wood sick very often. Mm. So you know we're able to complete these nine week tours that we've just done. But that might not work for somebody else. Somebody might need a few drinks. Somebody might mm. need the odd line at Charles Aznavour. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I can't. I, I, the last thing that I want to do is preach to anybody. But for me, um, I, I, I prefer being healthy and. and and get through it. And I have a responsibility in myself, a responsibility in my family as well. Mm-hmm. They need me to be fit and healthy, and, and, and uh, that's, that's just how it, roll, how it works for me. It's how it roll. Okay, just two more. Um, the plans for the for the band. You said that the calendar's full. Yeah. Anything exciting? Any well, uh, support? Or... Back to Oz. Um, yeah. You know, early next year, there's, there's already talk of it. Um, springtime. Mm. Yeah, we're going to Japan, we're touring the States. Excuse me, some more festival appearances, and then uh, the follow up will start recording in September, October of next year. Right, and have you already written songs for that? We're already working on it. Okay, last one, tough one. You know, when, when you um, were invited to, to join Thin Lizzy, you said you wouldn't do it unless it was right, if it didn't feel right. There's plenty of bands out there, very few bands have got the original members. Sure. 
do you have in your own mind criteria for when it's right and when it's not right? Is it down to, well, what's it down to? Is it just I down would, to? I, I would just know. I would just know. Yeah. I, I always follow my gut, and I think my yeah. gut would have told me I had a gut feeling if it, if this wasn't right or yeah. if it wasn't right. And it, I've got to be honest with you, in my hand on my heart, it, it always felt right to me. Mm-hmm. I never felt that I was was overstepping the mark. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I said, I'm a huge Lizzie fan before mm-hmm. I got it, and I try to do it with the utmost respect. And uh, you know, I listen. You know, Phil Lennon's a one-off. He's 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 a legend. Mm-hmm. I would never dream of trying to stand in those shoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, all I ever wanted to do was stand beside them, and, and hopefully that's what I did. Ricky, I feel we've only just scratched the surface, but uh, yeah. you've got a show to play. So thanks well, very well, much well, for talking to us. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.